this is Cleaver Sausage, and um, yeah, I've got a doozy for you. Okay, work this one out. Atheist is going to love this one. It shows what a lot of these Christian movements are like, right? These cults, these organized religions, be they Christian, Hebrew, Israelite, whatever, right? On YouTube. Okay? I put up this video, Jesus, was, Jesus wasn't white or black. Okay? According to this, I guess he's a Catholic priest, um, you know, detailing the facts. And he shows, uh, you know, the common picture of Jesus, white man, blue eyes and beard, you know, ginger hair, whatever, blonde hair, whatever. Right? Versus the um, Time Life magazine or uh, picture that, you know, where they did their um, 3D model according to the area where he was supposed to be born, he came from, right? And came up this Neanderthal looking man and he sees um something like you know um imagine being on be on a plane americans would have been on a plane with that guy right looking like an arab because his features were very arabic very uh or middle eastern very um the neanderthal man looking right and he says oh you know that's the kind of people they wouldn't want they wouldn't allow to go into their country, right? Because they look too much like a Muslim or something like that. Okay. So, as I was saying in another video, just had a normal, you know, everyday conversation over the video and whatever he believed and whatever I have come to realise, you know, is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. In, you know, decide to follow that, right? We will have a, all it is, is is we have our perspectives, our views and our opinions, right? And we get a lot of information from somewhere, and we just basically formulate an idea or you know our per perceptions, our views, our opinions on it, right? and then go and parrot it. Okay, something like that. You know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so you know usual getting on well, right? I can't show you the comments here, right? Because I've blocked him. Okay, I've blocked him. I blocked him, muted him from YouTube, right? Okay, because this is what happened. Basically, um, he's hitting me with scriptures going on about, yeah, obviously he's a Hebrew, I worked out. It's so easy to work out when someone's a US Negro and they're going on about something. That they're a Hebrew Israelite, right? So he's hitting me with all these verses saying, um, can we go find one here? Uh, let's see where he first came from. Okay, somewhere around here. He came on, right? He tells me from Revelations 1, oh Revelations 1 14, he tries to convince me, right, that the KJV, King James Version, says Jesus' skin was brown to black and he it was like wool. Amos 9 verse 7 KJV says that Ethiopians are God's chosen Israelites. Even Moses married one, right? So I show him, uh, well, I copy and paste something with, with the link to the sources from online, right? That state that Revelations 1, 14, 15, KJV, that version says, Jesus, um, what was it? Oh, I have to read it. I can't remember it now. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll read it exactly. Revelations... 114 from the NIV. Okay, uh, the KJV is a real huge one I got here. It's really, really big, and it's in Shakespeare. It's in Shakespearean, right? So I don't want to go there because it's like these are you know. That is, I'd rather speak normal English. Okay, so uh, 114, right to 15. Okay, um, so I'm going to use a, uh, the NIV, right? New International Version. Okay, I'll tell you exactly what it says. Revelations 1, 14 to 15. Okay, one of these damn things I can't see, it's such a small, four, small print. Right, okay, um, this is referring to Jesus. This is John's vision. This is what he saw, right? His head and hair were white 
like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. Okay. Um, in his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell, fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on, my, on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. The last. I am the living one. I was dead. Behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Okay. Uh, he's saying he's Alpha and Omega. Or in the ancient Aramaic, Galilean Aramaic. He's saying, I am the Aleph. Or the Hebrew, I am the Aleph and the Tau. The Tau. T-A-U, right? Okay, so explaining that verse there, interpreting that verse there, right, translating it, or, oh, yeah, defining it, sorry. Okay, what it's saying there, John's saying there is, he looked, right, and he saw this son of man, okay, and on footnotes, he's like, this referring here to Daniel 7, 13, right, compare it to that, whatever. Okay, his head and hair were white like wool, okay, and I'm, among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. It's describing Christ, right? In, in heaven, right? Up in the kingdom. His head, his head and hair were white like wool. Okay, so I suggested to him, go and define the words so he didn't have a misunderstood of that word, right? Because you obviously have, okay? Get it defined. Because what it means is similar, um, equal to, or, you know, um, similar, yeah, same, similar, yeah, in relation to, um, wool, okay? His hair was like wool, as white as snow, snow is white, right? And his eyes were like blazing fire. Okay, that's symbolic, isn't it? I mean, like, if you had, if you had seen him in real life or whatever, it would have, it would have, if fire came out of his eyes, you know, then um, fire came out of the bottom of, um, what's his name? Uh, William Wallace, like he said, you know, when he's on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fire comes out of my eyes and, and flames out of his butt or something, and it, it, it um, consumes all the Englishmen. Okay? Right, it's symbolic. Um, it's not literal, right? Okay, it's simple. Um, and it says, His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace. I'll give you the uh, ancient Aramaic original uh, language version, translated into English. Okay, in a minute. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. Okay. Um, so, there again, it's got like. So, it's like similar to. Equal to, you know, resembled. Understand? Um, and then in his, out of his mouth came a sharp double edged sword. So, did he have a sword coming out of his mouth? Like, is he a sword swallower? No. It's it's symbolic for the truth. Okay? What he says is like the truth and it cuts you to the bone. Cut down to the marrow. Okay? And then, because um, he's so, you know, like a sun, the sun shining in all its brilliance. Poor old John fell down. Okay, as if he was dead. Right. Okay. So he's he was telling me that his hair was his skin was brown and his hair's black, right? Like wool. Okay. Black hair and like wool. Okay. That. Okay. I could understand that, that if he was alive and that Neanderthal picture um, you can see here. You know, these little pictures here, if you can really see them. Um, oh, well, actually, we might go and have a look at this. Show you this picture, right? Here's the common everyday picture, Roman Catholic, right? Of what Christ looks like. Got gingery here, long hair, a pretty beard, blue eyes, probably, right? And he's white, okay? This guy will tell you that's fake, okay? Most of you out there will know that that's fake. It's a Renaissance painting, Roman Catholic, right? Okay, um, they use that, orientated, right? Okay, 
So you go a bit further here, and he shows you what he actually looks like according to some model makeup, according to what they um, actually look like in the area that he was born. Um, using it. Yeah, get, shut up. And that's what he looked like, supposedly, according to this model making thing, right? In Time Life, on Time Life, Time Life magazine, right? Or um, that Christian magazine, or whatever it was, or archaeology, Bible archaeology magazine. That's what he looked like, right? So, supposedly, right? He sort of looks like a Neanderthal man, more Neanderthal man than Jewish, right? But that's what they look like, according to, you know. According to that area where he was supposed to came from, that's what he looked like. Not this white man picture, right? This pretty boy picture over here, right? Okay. Um, there are others who have claimed that they've had visions or NDE or whatever, you know, that, and he looks like Barry Manilow or um, somebody else, you know? Yeah. And then they get crap for it because they, they've done two pictures, you know, two different looking guys, okay? So, I can understand if you're in a hot desert region all day for all your, rest of your, all of your life, right? You're going to get brown, okay? Not necessarily black like a Somalian or Tanzanian or whatever, right? African, right? You're just going to get really heavily tanned or brown, okay? Because supposedly you don't, white people don't have, they lack the melanin or the carbon to be black. This is what okay, people like Dr. Sabi and whoever, maybe some gen geneticists will say that, or, yeah, that's fact, whatever, right? That, that only a black man has melanin and charcoal. The white man doesn't have it. That's why when you hear the song by America, Horse of No Name, I spent three days in the desert sun and my skin began to turn red. He was burning, right? Because he didn't have melanin or the charcoal, right? In his um, DNA, whatever, right? In his system. So I'm trying to explain to him that, you know, yeah, just because you've got brown feet yeah, exposed to the sun all day or hands or whatever, it doesn't make you completely black. Oh, yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Hello? You know, especially if you're covered up, you know, those are exposed to the sun, right? But the rest of it will be covered up all day, most of your life. This goes white. It doesn't see the light of day. It doesn't, it doesn't get the sun, whatever, right? Unless you go nude. Yeah, babe nude in the sun, you might get a tan all over, right? That's why white women go and do that. Get that brown tan, right? Because I don't know, they feel like that looks better, whatever. Some people say, oh, they're trying to be brown or black or whatever. It's your perspective, that's your view, that's your opinion. That, that's the way you see it, right? Not necessarily true. Okay? So, because here's an example World War Two, you had, um, I can't remember what they're actually called, but in Torbrook. Tobruk, in the desert regions, you had these white British SAS, right? Their job, their mission was to drive their jeeps and trucks all over the place and blow up German supply depots or ammo dumps, right? So they'll be out there for anything from six months to a couple of years, and they slowly went brown, okay? They had um, beards and long beards like this. You know, even longer, and then sort of look, probably look like Arabs, right? But that's what they were doing, blowing up the supply, the ammo dumps, yeah, causing the Germans some grief. Okay, so they were out there in the hot sun all day, you know, for ages, and that's what happened. They turned brown, you know, they slowly turned brown. Okay, yeah. So this guy is trying to like, you know, hit me with these other verses about Amos nine seven and uh, oh, these other ones trying to say, you know, trying to back up that Jesus was black, he had woolly, nappy hair and all this. What they've done, probably what the cause of this is that Malcolm X movie, right, uh, Denzel Washington played that part, right? And he was in a room or something, and he come up against a Roman Catholic priest, the guy off the van, you know, when he, he did a, um, a, a, what was it, a hamburger and he had a nappy in it, that one, right? That Irish guy, right? He was the priest, and he stood up and he says, uh, no, no, that's, you know, that's wrong, blah, 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 Revelations 1, 14, 15, right? Because he had nappy hair, you know, curly ass hair, like a negro, right? So they passed it on somehow, and they all think that he's black, right? You know, there's an African, 
and all this sort of stuff. When it all started um, in the Middle East, like, you know, if you look at the, if you read the Bible, Ezra in that, right? Okay, uh, first Jeremiah and all that as well. There was a king called Cyrus who was anointed by God, right? So they considered him a Messiah in that sense, not the Messiah, but a Messiah because what he, what happened was the um, there was a uh, tribes. Some, uh, I'm not too sure if it's a Black Sea or whatever like that. Um, yeah, in the east there, and then they split into two. Ten eventually became the ten lost tribes, where the other two were Benjamin and Judah, right? That are now occupying the state of Israel. The apparently the, I think it's the Assyrians came down, captured them, right? Took them as slaves, uh, put them on ships and unsold them as slaves and all that sort of stuff, sold them into slavery, right? Took them to Babylon and just gave them a hard time. Right? They had no rights, they had nothing. Yeah? So maybe they maybe the um, those Jews, those original Jews, right? Those lost tribes, went there and um, you know, they adopted and then adapted many of the Babylonian customs, right? Yeah, they went to Babylonia, Mesopotamia, right? And they were there. Okay, until, well, I thought the Assyrians attacked Babylon, right? Um, they may have, yeah, they may have attacked it. Uh, have a look at the, yeah, do your own research, have a look at the history of that. I'm pretty sure they did, then they went down further and attacked these tribes and you know, put them in slavery. Then uh, that's why the Bible says, you know, you you get spread or something and you end up on the slave ships and all this sort of stuff right? so these Hebrew 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 Israelites these black Hebrew Israelites you know, they're all basing this stuff on that right oh that was us that was, you know all that sort of crap but if you go look at um the arche naked archaeologist or uh, the guy on that I think he's um I don't know what he is maybe he's a Jew Dutch or something like I can't remember. Um, no, m maybe uh, yes, some European anyway. Um, what's his name? Uh, Simcha Jobovich. Uh, Search for the Lost Tribes of Israel. That video. He actually goes see that documentary. Right? He he travels all over to find the ten lost tribes of Israel, right? And he comes upon uh, let's, let's say some. Um, Ethiopians, I guess, because you know like they converted to Judaism, right? Uh, possibly, well, the Bible says it. Like um, Philip, I think it is. He um, ministered to a Ethiopian chariot driver, a eunuch, right? And he converted, but I think the Ethiopians like converted uh, some other time, you know, for some other reason, maybe. I don't know. I'm not too sure on, on it history. I can't really think of it at the moment. Uh, it's in my head, but I just you know, go, go and find it. Uh, but anyway, they converted, right? So, I don't know, a couple of years ago or whatever, they were given, well, on the documentary, they were given um, immigration stairs, the right to immigrate to Israel. Okay? Right? So you see them going back there, right? These Ethiopians, or these black people, right? Being welcomed in. But this Hebrew Israelite Captain Tazariak, right? He used to wear a couch, his mother's couch cover and a door locker with a big line here and all right? Goes up against Shakar most and polite and all that. He was on Sarnita TV. He actually went to Israel and he said oh he was talking to a brother, obviously another black guy that was here, right? And he said that black people had been there since A D seventy, that's when the Romans attacked it, right? And so forth, so forth. But they were sectioned off in an area like a prison. They were segregated, right? Not allowed to be part of the Jewish crowd, supposedly, right? Some Jew out there might say, oh, no, 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 you know, well, go have a look at that Captain uh, Cesariak, uh, Hebrew Israelite, or SUPK, or whatever he is, and Sarnia TV, 
it's called When Two Worlds Collide, and what, yeah, I think it's part one. And he actually says it on in the first few minutes of it, right? Um, yeah, he, so he says it there as racist, just as racist or more as KKK mm-hmm. in America. Yeah. So anyway, this guy's trying to say this crap about Amos and 97 saying something, and then Deuteronomy 28, uh, I can't remember what it was. Yeah, I couldn't, I think it was like 6, 7, 8 or something, I don't know, because he put 6, 7, and it was 68, I don't know, I just couldn't understand it really. It was 6, 6 or 7, and it's 68, it's like, the, no 68 yet. So he must have meant 6, 7, 6, 8, whatever. But it had nothing to do with what he was trying to push, right? And then he gave me this other verse, and he's trying to push what it says, and another verse is like, it doesn't say that, man, you know? Oh, Moses married an Ethiopian. Yeah, yeah, he did, but first, when he killed um, the Egyptian overseer, apparently, and then he ran away into the desert region, he came across these people, these millions, right? And I, I think he saved a woman from these other guys at this well, or helped her, or whatever he did. Right? So she took him back to their tents, or whatever, their area, right? And introduced him to her father, who was a Midianite. Okay. Um, so he ends up marrying her, this Midian, right? Had a son to her, and then there was like they had, he had to uh, get his son circumcised, right? But she refused it. She says, "What the hell?" And wouldn't do it. So apparently she smeared blood all over um, Moses' feet. You know, go look at the verse. To verify that, um, so yeah, there's a couple of other ones where they say, oh, well, then he, you know, supposedly he married a Kushite or an Ethiopian, but then they poop it, say, oh, nah, nah, it's all rubbish. But apparently he married one, right, an Ethiopian. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure Zippora, Zip, Zippora was the media knight, and then he married this other one, a Kushite or Ethiopian, right? Um, yeah, I sort of like was also looking at um, Abraham, right? He came out of Chaldea, Ur of Chaldea, Mesopotamia. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. That's where he came from. He shifted region with his um, father and uncle and his then sister wife, <laughs> uh, uh, Sarai, right? They just moved to a, Mesop- a different area, of Mesopotamia, right? Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, he's he's a Chaldean, right? They're all Chaldeans. So, okay. So then he has um, children. Uh, who did he have? Did he have? Uh, he had Isaac and Ishmael, right? According to the Bible, Sarai. Maybe her name was changed to Sarah because she was one that mocked, laughed when um, his two angels or whatever said she's going to have a baby. She's like, I can't, you know, my wombs were sealed up. So that's why they changed her name from Sarah to Sarah, because she, you know, in Hebrew, she, she mocked, she laughed. Right? So she really wanted a son, an ear, H E I R, right? To, you know, take over the tribe when they're dead. Head of the tribe, you know, and the descendants that followed. But she couldn't get pregnant. So, she suggested to Abraham sleep with the bondswoman, Hagar, the Egyptian. Okay? Because what they'd done, yeah, I thought I had this wrong before, what they'd done is they'd gone to Egypt and then um, supposedly Sarah was so beautiful that the um, king, Pharaoh, couldn't take his eyes off her. Or, you know, these people reported that she was so beautiful looking, right? So he tried to take her as his wife, but then he had a dream or something that she belonged to another man or something. And, he yelled at her, you know, wait and tell me, blah, blah, blah. And then they got rich off it. Abraham, you know, we know they got rich. The first reason, of, that's the first incident of it, right? And apparently they went back in some other, well, I don't know if it was here. Yeah, I'm sure it was Egypt. They went there. And this guy fell in love with him. In love with him, wanted to beat her, right? The Pharaoh. Um, and he has a dream or something, God warns him, don't sleep with her because he belongs to another man or whatever. Because Abraham lied and said, um, yeah, he lied, so it says, he lied 
because he's in fear, right? Uh, for her and him, or for him and her, right? And he says, um, that's his sister. Okay, and going to the Bible, that was his, was his sister. Uh, you know, like, um, Yes, that was his uncle's daughter, so what does it make him? Okay? Um, Tera, Teran, is it? Tera? T yeah, something like that. Um, who died before they got out of that land of Chaldea. Uh, he died, right? So that was his uncle. Because it's his father's brother. That's what it says in the book. Yeah, so he, yeah, he went with his, that's either his... Yes, his niece, isn't it? I'm pretty sure of that. Um, what was it, Genesis or something? Okay, we'll have a look here. Okay. So don't put your arms in. Oh, no, no, you're talking rubbish. It's not wood seas. You can't read. Uh, there's people do in the comments. Um, where was it? Abraham, was he after? No, it must be. Okay. Um, okay, uh, to okay, here we go. Uh, Genesis eleven twenty three, I think that's it. Is the thing? Is the thing one? Yeah, uh, twenty four. 22, 20, Genesis 11, 22, 26, uh, goes on about Sarug, uh, um, 24, when Nahor, Nahor had lived 29 years, he became the father of Terah, and after he became the father of Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and had other sons and daughters, okay, um, say anything about Abraham being a uh, son of Nahor? Nahor? Let's see if I can see it here. Yeah, it's got this way up the top in verse 14 it's got Eber and it's supposed to be the uh, ancestor of the Hebrews yeah? if you're going to find that word the name yeah, he's the forefather of the Hebrews Okay, um, something like that. Uh, Abraham's not a Hebrew, he's from the era of Chaldean. So he's a Mesopotamian, later on a Jew. Right? Okay, um, when they used the first letters of their title, Yehudi, Yehuda, right? uh, Judah, yeah, they called themselves Jews. Okay, um, after Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abraham, Ab Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Uh, uh, what do I have in here? Right, okay, so Nahor, Nahor had lived 29 years, he, he became the father of Terah. So, so obviously that's the son, right? After Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abraham, Abraham, or Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Terah was Abraham's father. Oh my gosh, this is kind of confusing. Because it's sort of backwards. Okay, so, um, Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Terah was their father. Okay, this is the account of Terah. Terah became the father of Abraham, Abraham, or Abraham, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran became the father of Lot. Okay. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans. Okay, so that one of his sons died in the land of his birth. Abraham, Abraham and Nahor both married. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai. In the name of Nahor's wife was Milka. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milka and Ishka. Uh, how did this Sarah come from? The Sarah came from. Um, how did she come from? I'm not too sure about it. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I read that she was his sister or something like that, but I don't, I don't know what that word to steal that one out. Um, but yeah, okay. Uh, now, Sarai was barren, she had no children. Tara took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, his daughter in law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram. Together they set out from her of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. See, they moved out of there and went to Canaan, right? Uh, yeah, he tried to tell me that, um, this guy tried to tell me that he was a Canaanite. I was like, no, 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 if you read your frickin' Bible properly, he was from the Ur of Chaldea, Mesopotamia. And then he moved to Ca the land of Canaan. Okay. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Okay, blah, blah, blah. And Terah died in Haran. I was think that's probably the place named after his son. With that guy, whatever. Okay. Um... So anyway, uh, she's barren, her womb's all closed up, she wants a child, she's two angels or whatever came, or maybe three, and you know, ate with them or whatever, and said, uh, you know, wife, to his wife, it's, it's all right, you're going to have a child, she laughed, she says, uh, you know, her womb's all closed up, whatever, so they changed her name to Sarah. One who laughed, one who mocked, right? Okay, uh, right, so you get to the part, meat and potatoes, where she had a kid. First child, right? Okay. Okay, because God makes a covenant with Abram. Abram. 15, right, Genesis 15. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am a shield with very great reward. Or shield, your reward will be very great. Okay. And this in the footnotes. But Ab Abraham said, Oh, sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit? The meaning of the Hebrew for this phrase is uncertain. Okay, uh, in the NIV. Well, inherit my estate is Elysia of Damascus. And, uh, uh, but Ab Abraham said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and one who will inherit my estate is Elysia of Damascus? Okay. And Abraham said, You have given me no children as so a servant in my household will be my heir then the word of the Lord came to him this man will not be your heir but a son coming from your own body will be your heir he took him outside and said look up at the heavens and count the stars blah 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 so shall be your offspring and the Lord he brought you out of Ur of Chaldeans of the Chaldeans to give you this land the land of Canaan right he goes on and on like that And goes on and on, and he gets to the part where, uh, chapter 16, now Sarai, verse 1, now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian maid servant named Hagar. So she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my maid servant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. So Abram agreed to what Sarah said. So after Abram was, had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai, his wife, uh, yeah, okay, took her Egyptian maid servant Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. To be his wife, right? Because once they united, got together, I guess he had to marry her. I don't know. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise him. It's just got a bit mouthy, eh? Then Sarai said to Abraham, you are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my... Oh, okay, she's getting cracked. So she's confronting her husband. And now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. Yeah, look at me, I'm pregnant. You're not. Ha, ha, ha. Be arch. Like that, you know? May your Lord God judge between you and me. And blah, blah, blah. Whatever, right? Okay, so she was an Egyptian. And then... Um, she suggests the rice to just get rid of it. Um, you 
your servant is in your hands. Abraham said, Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was a spring that is beside the road to Shur. And she said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from? And where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress in Mrs. Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel said, I will be so oh, so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to sell. To come. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now a child and you will have a son and you shall name him Ishmael. Right? And down here in the footnotes, it's got um, Ishmael means God hears. For the Lord has heard of your misery, he will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand against him, and he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. Uh, and the footnote here says, If or live to the east of. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her, You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. I've seen the back. Seen the back. Okay, she's seen the back of him. Maybe like um Ezekiel or who that prophet was, or that person was it? Was it Ezekiel or Jeremiah, I can't remember. One of those two where, where, where they only saw the back of God, you know, like the shadow went past and all that sort of stuff. And he never actually saw God's face, he just saw it, the back of um, his back or something like that. Okay, uh, I, here, I've seen, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Beer La Hai Roy. Bear the high and roy means well of the living one who sees him. Uh, well of God. Okay, um, it is still there between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar, Hagar bore Abraham a son, or Abraham a son, and Abraham gave the name Ishmael to the son she had. Born Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. Ooh, didn't need Weiger in those days. Um, So she was an Egyptian, she was a ma maid servant of um, Sarah, Sarai, right? And then she has, um, God tells me they're going to have a son or another one. Um, and the covenant, oh, you yeah. know, my covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Yeah, and along comes circumcision, by his command, right? Okay. So, um, yeah. My covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. Okay, so, yeah. They were in the Ishmael. Ishmaelites weren't included in the covenant. Right, even though, um, what's his name? Isaac was as a younger. Right, see, here's the difference. Ishmael is a half breed of a Chaldean, not a Hebrew, of a Chaldean. And an Egyptian woman, right? Isaac is totally um, Chaldean. He's not Hebrew. He's not an Ishmaelite. But he's a Chaldean. It's from the seed of a Chaldean, right? Between yeah, two Chaldeans, mother and father, right? The other one was uh, yeah, Ishmael, Ishmaelite. With the, where he stepped with the um, his other wife, right? Hagar the Egyptian. Okay, so there you go. I presented that, right? And the guy, yeah, this guy is just basically pumping out these rubbish translations of the um, scriptures, right? So I told him, you know, you're, you're talking a lot of rubbish, you're mistranslating it, you're twisting it. Stop doing that. 
you know, give the correct one, right? Because you're false, right? And you know, explain to them that, well, basically he's in this cult. That's what they are. They're a cult. Okay. Because they sit on the street, preach loud in America. Let's watch their videos. The white people go past, and they got okay. They've got a history. Black people had history. Making up that they're the black Jews, the lost tribe, one of the lost tribes, or whatever tribe, whatever they're talking about, right? Okay. They're the original Jews. Not just up like Arabs, and they're abusing. Uh, they, they're abusing people, white people. Are we looking at cracker? You faggot. Um, incest child, you know, made a Jew boy cry and all this stuff, alright? All this sort of crap. Yeah, these young guys are like, get a bit rowdy there, a bit raunchy, and she's like, step back, man, don't touch me, or punch with your teeth out. You know, all that sort of crap, you know, like, you know, whereas um, the guy David from Price Forgiveness um, Church up in Toronto, Canada, is surrounded by LGBTs and people hassling him and trying to punch him and all that sort of stuff. And he just says, hey, somebody, you know, um, call the cops, I've been assaulted. Or he tells the people, look, step back, you know, you're in my space. Don't treat me, don't touch me, all that sort of stuff. See that difference? I mean, he made a couple of mistakes like that. Well, he was just using the Bible, wasn't he? And he said to this young lady, well, basically, you're a whore. Because <laughs> he had sex outside of marriage and all that sort of stuff. And that's what the Bible says, right? I wouldn't have said that. I would have put it like you're promiscuous or, you know, something, you know. you got to be really, really careful with your words. And this chick was on them, right? And then they all started on him. This little girl, she's about probably about 16 with her. She's just, uh, she's just been an egg. Um, yeah, so he's trying to hit me for this crap, right? He asked me, I'm reading all King James Version. Please tell me the scripture that I'm misquoting. So I did. Okay, I used NIV or whatever. But yeah, I could, I could have told him, you know, this is what it says in your KV, KJV. You know, you're, you're mistranslating it, you know, and all that sort of stuff, right? So it goes on and on like that. And then, um, yeah, I, I didn't see this one. Clever sausage, your people have never had hair with like wool. How does he know? He, he doesn't even know who my people are, right? Okay, let's um, have a look at Mary's. We've got one over Mary here. He's one of a Maori here, right? We had like, in a sense, woolly hair, but not, not their kind of hair, right? Their kind of hair is nappy, right? This black guy from uh, Africa on a Sarnita video, he was really good, you know. Um, knew what he's talking about. And he says, like the universe, everything's like twisted and all that sort of stuff. You know, there's nothing straight, right? But there's only two kind of people in the world: people with kinky hair, right? That curly tight hair, like the Africans in that have, and then the European with their straight hair, right? Pretty much, right? Yeah, so what this guy there is trying to say to me is that, you know, my people, <laughs> he doesn't even know who my people are, right? He's trying to say I'm, I'm a white man because I'm not, you know, um, I'm a Gentile because I'm not part of this Hebrew, uh, Hebrew, you know. Israelite game, right? Cult, right? Please wake up. Your, your people have never had hair like wool. Yeshua has never said stealing a land, rape, murder, genocide. Okay, what the hell is this guy talking about? To be his way, right? So he's like trying to class me as a, a European or whatever that rape, raped, stole land, and murdered people. It's like, how, how, do you, how do you do that when you don't even know the person? You know, you even met them and all that sort of crap, right? Okay. And then he started, because I exposed his crap, okay, because I was exposing him pretty hard out, right? Okay, he says, um, sister, <laughs> is there anywhere there that I said I was his sister? Okay, is this is a picture of a dude. Does that look like a female? Anyone? Yeah? That guy's an idiot. Okay, I'll show you, I'll show you this picture here, at the end here, of my, um, uh, channel one, right? Can't listen to it, but yeah. Subscribe, bro. Now, is that a female? <laughs> is that a female? This guy's nuts. You know, this is what religion does to you. It makes you nuts, right? If you don't have your faculties and you know, keep keep in reality, it's going to make you a nut. No way. Can you see breasts? Can you see like whatever? 
No, it's a male. It's a geek, but it's a male. So this guy is trying to insult me by calling me a sister because I'm not joining his um, Hebrew Israelites or whatever they call it, right? Hebrew Israelites. Sorry, Hebrew Israelites. Yeah, yeah, I'm not joining it. He, and he sees, um, you know, what makes you think he was white, right? Because he says he looked aged, like he he like wool and white as snow. It's like, well, he changed it from here. He had black hair, black skin, black feet, whatever. And now he's got wool as white as snow. He like wool and white as snow, right? Meaning he's an older person of aged here. It's a lot of rubbish. Yeah, well, Egypt is in Africa. Yeah, that, that's pretty obvious, right? So what's that got to do with it? So how do you think Yeshua is white? It didn't say he was white. No, it didn't say... See, this is what I put here, look. Jesus wasn't white or black. That's the title of the video. So uh, this guy obviously can't read, right? He's not very good at reading. Okay. He needs to go do English composition, stuff like that, right? Um, and I told him, I didn't say he was white or black, as in the video here, right? Uh, but I understand that hot sun, being hot sun all day, all your life, can make you brown. Okay. So this guy starts getting all mouthy, calling me a sister, right? And I says, "Look, mate, I'm not a sister, okay? And my people, are, uh, like New Zealand Maori, right? Coming from New Zealand, indigenous people. And if you go and read a book by Gerald Massey called Book of the Beginnings, Part Two, it tells you, well, it's basically he's um, uh, looked at the ancient Egyptian language." With the ancient Kemet language from Kemet, right? And it's competed with the Maori, right? Okay? And it's the closest to the Egyptian, like you got Ra for the sun, or the sun god, and the Maori, right? Okay, and then you got an Egyptian, Ra, the sun, or the sun god, or the sun god deity, whatever, right? And you got other words that are very, very similar in um, spelling. Right, and meaning, yeah, it's like fi uh, page 535 of a book of beginnings, part two. You can get it, uh, you can go have a look at it. I've got a video on it, uh, it's called uh, Africans More African Than Africans, um, and it's, it goes into detail about that, right? Yeah, so he goes, oh, I still think you're a sister anyway. You know, what a dick, you know, that's what's, what's wrong with your brain, you know, why do they do that sort of crap? You know, because they, because I exposed them. See, I, mean, I still see you as a sister. So she says, "Oh, okay. You, well, I, I now see you as a circus clown, right? So here you go, Mr. Circus Clown. Here's your reward: a balloon." And then I muted him. That's that was a balloon, right? And then I removed most of those posts here, right? So that's why I can't. Yeah, they're not there because I removed his post because he was just being insulting. I mean, like, if you're a holy roller, Jesus-loving, whatever you are, Christian, or whatever, right? Or, or Muhammad-loving Islam, right? You don't say that crap to people. You don't insult people. Like, look at the Jews. Um, ah, I've got this. I'll get rid of all this. Um, I think I've opened it. Uh, bookmark here. Um, actually, I don't think it is that one. Okay. okay, so I got this other one about these Jews. Well, I'm not too sure if this is it. Uh, all this stuff here about the Jews, right? And then they actually talk. They actually talk about the wording, uh, words, the, the tongues. You know, pretty powerful. It can hurt. The words can hurt and worse stuff. You know, and she says you don't talk to people like that. You know, because it can do massive injuries. You know, mentally, physically. Spiritually, whatever, right? My speakers are starting to play up. Uh, I've got it connected to a big ass speaker um, thing I found down the road. I haven't, because I haven't got the right cord to put it into the computer. And it goes, and he, yeah, but that's what they're saying, right? Uh, okay, can't we go back, I suppose. Oh, you, you could, I suppose. Uh, table of contents. Have a look there. Okay, um. Human nature. Did it help? Yeah, and, and it says, you know, like, 
Torah or whatever says so you, know, you, you don't talk to people like this and don't talk to people like that yeah it, it's and all this other stuff and it's really really good okay that said um mekon slash memory dot org memory dot org okay right have a read it it's really good um could help you out you know because yeah. you got to have that re when you're born again right in the ancient Aramaic it's born from the head or born again right so you have to have a new uh, you have to have a renewed mindset you have to throw away the old man the old beastly man right that you, you know were before you became Christian right? put that aside and then take on this the new man right filled, filled with the Holy Spirit powered by the Holy Spirit taught by the Holy Spirit led by the Holy Spirit whatever right? um yeah, completely different mindset, you know, Christ-like, right? And be holy and pure and whatever like him, right? And listen to his teachings and do what he did. But yeah, you know, not let's say it's imitate, but I mean, uh, don't be an imitate like you got an Elvis imitator or a, uh, some celebrity Bruce Lee imitator. You know, this yeah, it's not like that. It's more like be like him, you know, do what he did. Right? Uh, yeah, be as he was. Okay? Yeah, it's like... Yeah, because I exposed him, right? I told him, like, why you... Because I, after he gave me all this crap, this rubbish, I said, look, this is why I'm, I've got my channel on Couch... Couch Kumar, right? My another YouTube channel, right? Because I'm so sick of the crap, the hype, the fluff, the BS that... Like that, that people are putting across, you know? And then I exposed them for, you know, just... I'm trying to educate and re-educate and teach them, right? You know, come on, man. It's not what your Bible says. It's not what your Jesus says. It's not what your Muhammad says, right? According to your book. Okay, we can have a nice conversation about it, and I might learn something from them, you know? Because that's the way I learn. But what I experience, and what I'm learning is that all these religious people are circus clowns. That's exactly what they are, they're circus clowns, you know? Big red nose and floppy shoes. Ah, ah, you know? Because once you say to them, you know, brother, you're wrong there. They get all snooty, you know? Because you touch, I guess you touch on their belief system. You, know, you hit a raw nerve and they don't like that. It's just human nature. Something they love so dearly that they defend it to the death, right? Because that's what they've been programmed to do, right? By the churches, whatever. Right? They, they won't stop and think for themselves and when you question it they're like oh, 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 you know make up all this crap they start making assumptions telling lies about you as if you had an intimate relationship you know and all this stuff it's like dude why are you insulting me calling me a sister so I call you a, a transgender sissy you know you wouldn't like that would you you know you'd get all mad you know you oh, are you talking to me like that if I, if I just like you know lost it and says you're a, you're a, the faggot, uh, you're a homo, whatever, you know, whatever, make, you know, you're full of, you're like a cow poop, whatever, you know, you're this and that, he'd be really, really upset, and then he'd go tell you, oh, he was nasty, because I've experienced that here, like, some people came at 2am in the morning and said, what the hell, ding, 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 you know, you're still wordy, what the hell are you doing here at 2am in the morning, go home to your mummy and daddy, and come back tomorrow, you know, at a decent time. So this silly girl goes to her parents and says, Oh, he's a nasty man. He's mean. You know, because I told them off. Yeah? Logic and common sense. Respect. You know, use a brain. Have a brain. Use a brain. Stop and think. Oh, it's two in the morning. Oh, I think I'll wait till tomorrow. Then I'll go knock on the door. Not come around at two in the morning and go, Where is she? Yeah, the door. And you get yelled at, so you go home and you tell your mummy or your daddy, Oh, he's mean! He hurt you, hurt you me! You know, by telling me, oh, what the hell are you doing here? At two in the morning. Nah, it's just stupid. Anyway, I don't want to get down the drain of depression. <laughs> I'm a happy-go-lucky guy and smiley, you know, so I said to him as well. You know, because he's saying, oh, you're all upset and you're angry. I said, no, I'm driven and passionate, right? Um, and so I always put, um, he started calling me sister then, he's trying to rub it in, because I exposed him, right? Um, right? Yeah, yeah, that's why, because I exposed him.
you get all, you get all upset. That, uh, I've really clicked on to how people think and react. You know, you can I can I, I'm as cool as a cabbage because I learned that from experience, right? From dealing with these clowns, these circus clowns, right? So I'm like I said to him, I'm like a I'm not angry or anything. I'm like a a lettuce or a, ca a cauliflower in a chilly wind. You know, cool as cool as that, right? As chill as that. And that's why I have these smiley faces as well, bro. Because I'm actually laughing at you. <laughs> I'm actually laughing at you, you know, your silliness, right? You know? That's why I put the, um, yeah, you know, the old colon in the notice. Yeah? Like that, right? That's why I put that. Because I'm laughing at you. I'm, s I'm smiling with you and laughing at you. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you come out with all this crap. Oh, yeah. Jesus wasn't a Jew. He was a Somalian. Oh, it's like, what the hell is that crap, you know? Or, um, whatever, you know, whatever they dream up, right? So that's what I put here, look. Okay, this is a real juicy news, right? It will blow your, you out of your socks if you are Christian or semi-religious. Because it will, because this guy's telling you he wasn't black or white. Okay, well, yeah, he wasn't white or black. Yeah, basically. Okay? This is coming from me, right? It might even make you feel really hurty wurty You know? Go cry to your mummy, oh, he said this. Go cry to your churchies, oh, he said this. You know? And then try to do a tag thing. Okay, um, yeah, okay, so I believe in honesty. Honesty is... is my best policy and I strive to live by that yeah so it's time for the other churches to pull up their sagging socks and get the thousand percent right with God or Jesus or whatever right stop the fluff the hype the lies the greed and get one thousand percent right with Jesus here's a link to my website that I created right which is based around all of that what I'm doing see this is what Jesus supposedly really looked like you be the judge Know the real truth, and the real truth will set you free. Okay. And what we'll bring you. Okay. See, honesty is our best policy. Therefore, we swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But don't forget, we're human. We make mistakes. To err is human. To forgive is divine. Yeah, that's what makes us human. So t kindly tell us, well, you made a mistake there, mate. Yeah, you know, can you rectify it? Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. There you go. Give them an apology, and we try to fix it. Here you go, you know. We're not like oh, 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 get all sad, you know. I want to, you know, set the dogs on you, you know, get all hurty wurty. Okay, and here, here it is in Syriac, Syriac font. Okay, from the original uh, manuscripts, like Kilboris Codex and whatever. It's very much like a book, doesn't it? Like a book you can buy today with those old books on the library bookshelf, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, here we go. Denominations are stumbling blocks, teaching doctrines based on their own understanding instead of allowing scripture to speak for itself. As people draw near to me with their mouth and respect me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, but in vain do they wish me. Yeah, I know, I'm guilty. I'm just guilty as, as that person or those people, right? You know? But I'm getting to the stage where it's like I'm getting sick of all this hype, fluff, and BS. Right? From me, from yeah, from myself first, and from everybody else. You know? It's uh, all this kind of crap coming okay, say if you're a religious person it's coming from other religious people, it's going to push you to atheism man. You're just gonna give up and go if it, you know, if at all, right? And go atheist, then you're gonna get go to hell and all that stuff because these clowns pushed you to that point where you just said, oh, I've had enough of it and went atheist. Sorry God, but I had to, you know, like, just one of those things. Or, oh, you're off to hell to burn, you know? Yeah, you know? <laughs> you can't move these clowns, right? That's why I got out of these denominations, these religious organisations, because that's how they were treating me. That's how they I've got no problem with them. A lot of them will say, I've got an attitude because blah blah. Nah, you gave me that attitude, right? By presenting me and trying to sell me, you know, tell me and sell me your bullcrap, right? And I, I did my homework, my research, 
and found that you know, through the ancient original manuscripts translated in English whatever, that they were pulling the wool out of her eyes. That's what they're doing, you know. Okay, I'm going to go have a coffee and um, probably watch a cool movie. Um, I just finished watching, um, before that I was watching, uh, what the hell was it called? Um, so look at this Christian guy here, this guy here, uh, I don't know what his name is. Um, he likes juicing up his ladies. <laughs> probably got good movies, but every time I see him, he's, he's doing like in a different role, and he's always a lady. Worry about that guy, you know, being a churchy guy, whatever his name is. Um, what the hell did I watch? It was really, really good. Oh, yeah, Penance Lane. Yeah, that was real good. Uh, yeah, that was really good. Guy trying to get the, um, you know, the his mate's done a robbery, $3 million hidden in the um, attic. Basement and try to get hold of it, and then all the crap he had to go through. Um, what's that guy's name? John Schneider. Of, um, what's that? There's a good old boys. Never mean, you know, how was that? Dukes of Hazard, yeah. Yeah, that guy. Blonde guy. Yeah, he's supposed to be a preacher and all that sort of crap, but he's uh, harvesting organs. That was really good. Um, and then what's this other one after that? It was really cool, and I forgot what the hell it was. Uh, I was thinking of watching that, it comes at night. Comes tonight, looks pretty good. And I can't remember what this other one was, but um, it's supposed to be like World War Two. Um, oh, I watched Death Note, uh, yes, Notebook or something. Death Note, yeah, that was pretty good. With um, William Defoe, damn good actor. Um, yeah, I can't remember which one I watched. I know I watched that one and then that one, so not really sure what I watched. Um, this other one was supposed to be like a, after a nuclear war. This guy's just basically surviving and he takes in people and, and they do the duty on him. You know, and then he helps them out and they do the duty on him again, he helps them out and then yeah. That's pretty good. Find the name of the damn thing. Um Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you like that, rent. <laughs> rather long video um, subscribe to my channel um, give us a couple of thumbs up yeah tap this tap that geek over there with the glasses thumbs up tap that sucker and um, subscribe to my channel right and give us your uh, comments and reviews down below and a thumbs up We much appreciated um, and I'll bring you some more interesting uh, topics Okay, be nice to people on YouTube and you know, don't troll them and give them nasty comments and call them an idiot and a circus clown and dickhead and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. We don't put up with that crap. Okay, don't be a victim to no one. Goodbye.